Well, hello, I'm Emeril Lagasse from New Orleans, and welcome to The Essence of Emeril. You know, today I'm going to spend the entire show on a mushroom that has become one of the most popular ingredients equating into some of the most popular dishes in American cuisine today. And it's that gigantic umbrella-shaped fungus known as the portobello mushroom. You've probably seen it in a lot of restaurants. I know you've certainly seen them in supermarkets and gourmet stores. They're a little expensive. You know how expensive it is. But what a lot of people don't know is that the portobello mushroom is actually the common cremini, you know, the brown cremini mushroom, just a few days older. Creminis are also known as the Italian browns, but uh, where they're mostly widely cultivated mushrooms today here in the United States. And I'm going to show you a dish, one of my favorites. I, I love portobello mushrooms. They're kind of the, I, I look at portobellos as, you know, I know I've told you, I'm going to tell you again, you know, you got great steak. And then you've got yellowfin tuna, bluefin tuna, the steak of the sea. In the wild and exotic mushroom world, Portobellos are the steak of mushrooms. In today's stores, you probably have seen them as small, these large caps, to as large, look at this size of this one. I mean, you can just hold on to it, use it as an umbrella out there that gets so big. But boy, are they steaky. And you can slice them and use them in all sorts of things. Today we're going to do this dish about portobello, one of my favorites. Now, there's the gills. You can see the gills are uh, sort of brown, beginning to, not bad, just brown discoloration, beginning to start getting, uh, they have a lot of color also in these, in these portobello mushrooms. But these are the cremini. Look at the size, the various, these are cremini mushrooms cultivated. And what they, portobellos are, just creminis, these are baby portobellos. You see, the gill hasn't been exposed. Once the gill gets exposed and the air begins to aerate in the cap of them, they wait until the creminis get about this big. And then the gill begins and they have the stem and they cultivate them and send them. And they're fabulous. So one of the greatest sellers right now on a lot of American uh, menus at Emeralds, we have this, well, I'm just going to show you the dish. Let me tell you one of the components that we're going to do, though. One of the components that we're going to do to do this complete dish, since I'm going to do a complete portobello mushroom dish for you today. Hey, go grab the notebook. Come on, let's go. Pay attention. Here we go. I got a very simple bottle of port wine. Now, this is some of the uh, extractions. Uh, and things that you can do. You don't have to do this. You can use red wine. But hey, this is the essence of emerald right here. We're going to start reducing this down. That's all I want to do. We're going to reduce this down. I'm going to show you later on how this becomes a great component. Now, how do you cook portobellos? You know, I do all kinds of things with portobellos. You know, you can take two portobellos. You can make a filling. Make a little filling. I mean, you could use ham and cheese, you could use foie gras, you could use some sort of mousse, and then you make a little sandwich. And then you can just sort of bread these, and you can saute them. You can oven roast them. You can dredge them in flour and fry them. You can simply just take a cap and season them and put them in that wonderful seasoned flour and egg wash and seasoned breadcrumbs and pan, pan them or saute them. So many things. You can slice them. They make, they're delicious in risotto. And speaking about risotto, that's what I want to do. I'm going to make a risotto with this portobello. When I come back, I'm going to stuff one. I'm going to show you a magical beginning, a magical dish of portobello mushroom and a new style of risotto. Don't go away. Stay with me on the Essence of Emerald. We'll be right back.
Hey, welcome back. Emeril Lagasse here. My next trick, I'm going to pull a rabbit. No. Look, I was reducing this port wine. Why am I doing that? I'm extracting all the alcohol out, getting all the sweetness of that delicious port wine to make a port wine extraction. Well, I'm going to show you what that's going to do later on. And you know what? When you get four, five, six portobellos, you know, particularly for the family, a great thing, or any mushrooms for that. You know, everybody just throws the stems out. Well, here we go. Write this down. Right now, come on, write this down. Take all of those mushroom stems and peelings, and you just put them in with a little maripois. Well, what is that, a little, a little onion, a little, perhaps just a few pieces of celery and a little carrot, and all those mushroom stems, and make a mushroom stock. You just bring it up to a boil, season it with some salt and pepper, perhaps maybe a few herbs, and let it extract. Get this delicious mushroom stock, uh, this mushroom stock. You strain it, then you can freeze it, keep it in the refrigerator. This is what I have right here. Look, all it is is a little, a little mushroom broth or a little mushroom stock. And the reason for that is, is because what I'm going to do now is we're going to make a little, start making a little bit risotto. Risotto? That Italian arborio rice? No, I'll tell you what we're going to do. And those of you probably have had this dish at Emeralds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little olive oil and start heating that up. And then what I'm going to do is add some onion. Why? I, I just want to want to get a little onion and I want to get a little flavor into that, uh, to that onion. So I'm adding a little salt and uh, a little bit of fresh ground pepper. It's so much better when you use fresh ground pepper. It's just pungent. It just wakes your taste buds right up. So we're going to start sauteing a little bit of that onion right there and get some flavors. Now let me show you. See this here? This is barley. Just cheap, inexpensive barley. You know what? I like cooking with inexpensive, cheap stuff and making them taste great. I mean, everything doesn't have to be truffles and foie gras and caviar. Bali, red beans, black beans. So I blanched a little bit of my Bali in some salted water for about 10 minutes. So it's sort of a little bit tender. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to make a little risotto, as we do at the restaurant at Emeralds, for our portobello. I saute the onion for about two or three minutes. Just in a little skillet. Let's see how simple this is. Now we're going to get a little flavor. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add our barley. Little pellets, little delicious barley. I love barley. And we'll saute that a little bit. Now, now we're going to work this like in a risotto stage. So what we're going to do is we're going to start working in our mushroom stock. Just like we're going to do a, a regular arborio risotto, we're going to use barley. And we're going to cook it, and we can keep adding a little bit stock to it. As uh, You can always add, but you can't take out. So we have our stock here, and we don't need that all rip-roaring, high-boiling. We just keep it simmering, keep it hot, and we keep adding a little bit stock. And we're going to come back to this risotto, barley risotto, if you will. Just like we would do arborio rice, we're going to let it cook. Now, the one thing like in any rice dish, hey, you got to taste this. Now is when you got to taste this because if you don't taste it now, at the end, it's too late. The rice is cooked. So make sure you season it. We're going to add a little bit of salt and um, love that fresh ground pepper. And hey, we're going to add just a little bit of fresh parsley in there and let some of the parsley get get in there and then we're going to finish it just like a risotto with a little cheese and a little cream and a little butter perhaps maybe a little more olive oil now the portobello mushroom i love these guys the steak of the mushroom you know if you get the really really if if you get them really really dirty you just take a little brush you know like i you don't want to wash these guys you don't want to soak them they just deteriorate them they're, they're, they're not friendly with water and they're not friendly being washed until you're ready to cook them or they're going to deteriorate and just spoil so remember that well now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the outside of the mushroom 
and I'm going to use a little olive oil. I'm going to use a little olive oil. And uh, you guys know out there, you got to season these guys. How are they going to taste good? So we're going to add a little bit of that essence in there. Well, you know what's in that essence, a little salt, a little pepper, a little cayenne. And what you see how, how much the mushroom absorbs liquid, as I said earlier? Now, we're going to add a little bit olive oil to that side there. And then we're going to add a little bit more of that wonderful spice. And we're going to start to grill. We're going to start to grill our portobello. Now, if you don't have a grill, hey, I know you all don't have a wonderful kitchen like I do here at the Television Food Network. But look, you can just saute these. Season them, saute them in olive oil. I'm going to show you the right way to have them cooked. Now, look at this. I took one of the portobellos and I sliced them. Don't they look like a steak? But what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of these and break a few pieces of the stems. and You add a little bit of that portobello right into our Bali risotto. Now let's check on our risotto real quick. First of all, you can see the liquid is uh, reducing quickly out of just like if we were doing rice or we were doing arborio for risotto, we're using Bali. Let's uh, have a little taste check. Hmm, it's still a little al dente. So, we're going to add a little bit more of our mushroom stock right in there. Check our seasoning. Hmm. And then we're going to come back. I added a little bit of that portobello. I'm going to add a little tomato now. A little diced tomato, which is optional. You know, that tomato is going to also give off a little water, a little juice in there. Now you can see I'm just stirring this around. Doesn't that look delicious? Don't be confused. We got a little port extraction, reducing down that we started earlier. We're doing a little portobello Bali risotto over here. And we're going to finish that up real quick. You just add a little bit more mushroom stock as it, as it starts to cook. Then we've got our wonderful portobellos grilling away here. And we're going to continue to grill them up. Just adding a little oil because they'll absorb that oil. And right after the break, I'm going to take these grilled portobellos with our Bali portobello risotto, and I'm going to finish the dish and just show you how simple a great meal. Hey, don't go anywhere. Stay with me. We'll be right back on The Essence of Emerald. Welcome back, and I hope you're enjoying this entire show on portobello mushrooms, one of my favorite mushrooms in the whole wide world. I mean, you can do all kinds of things with these uh, portobello mushrooms. Well, I just uh, started grilling these. You see how nice and tender they're getting? Like I said, if you don't have a grill, you can just simply saute them, and they're perfect. Speaking about sauteing, let's go check on our wild mushroom, in this case portobello. Bali, as you can see, cooking up just super, really delicious. Now, we're going to do a little taste test here and see if our Bali, mmm, almost, mm-hmm. The thing with Arborio rice is that, um, you know, you keep stirring it. You got to keep stirring it. And I have been stirring this. I've been stirring this around. It's not the starch like arboreal rice will give off, but it's still the same technique applies that you have to add liquid, a little bit of liquid. Now at this point, 
I'm going to add a little bit of fresh basil. And uh, I'm adding the basil now so that the basil essence, if you will, will sort of be absorbed in that. You can see our port wine that we started earlier. You can see our port wine is starting to get in that syrupy, very syrupy consistency. It makes a very delightful, simple sauce or glaze, which I'll show you, that you can use for your pork or beef or vegetables or portobello in this case. And our mushrooms are sizzling away. And I'm going to show you a little simple garnish. Before I do that, I'm going to add a little bit more mushroom stock to this because it is just about in the finishing stages. And then we're going to finish that portobello barley risotto. Parsnips, particularly in the fall and uh, winter season, uh, parsnips are really spectacular. And I got a couple of parsnips here, and I want to show you a very simple little garnish that we're going to do. But first of all, we take our little peeler and just peel that, peel that little skin off the parsnip. It's basically a white carrot, the albino carrot. We take these and we just eliminate them completely, completely eliminate them. And what I like to do when we do at the restaurant is then we get nice strips like this, you see? And uh, get nice long strips. from our nice parsnip. You could certainly use carrot as well. And you just take them down and strip them with a peeler just like this. And then what I like to do, once we get a few strips like that, is, you know, if you really want to garnish them up real nice, what you can do is you just fry them. And uh, you really fry them, and they make, you can see how they're being fried. You really make a wonderful, we'll fry them just until they get a little crisp. And then I'm going to put this whole dish together for you. Now, we're frying a little parsnip. You probably have had these at Emeralds. Uh, wonderful, crispy. We use them for all kinds of vegetable garnishes and particularly on a little portobello dish. Once they get nice and crispy, you can do these ahead of time. You can also just have these as a little snack. Then what we're going to do is, after they get crispy, we'll just take them off and put them over here and just let these sort of be for a minute. Of course, we've got to give them a little bit of salt so that they have a little bit of flavor. And now, we're going to turn over for on our grill the portobello. You see how it just looking just like a steak, nice and mm, tender like that and really tasting delicious. A little bit of garnish right there, some slices. We'll put this piece right in our risotto. And I think it's time right now to finish our risotto. Now, let's see what we got here. You got to stir it, and you can always add a little bit of that stock. Okay? Let's taste it. Mm-hmm. 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 Now, let's finish it. I like to finish my risottos with a little butter, which I just added. Certainly with just a little bit of cream. You can see that was like a tablespoon only. And then I like to finish it with some nice grated cheese. We're going to turn all the heat off here now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our risotto off the stove and stir this little baby in there, our cheese and butter. And we got that all nice and done. And I think, folks, it is definitely time right now to do this wonderful dish one of my favorite portobello dishes. Watch this. We're going to take our portobello and we're going to set it right there. We're going to use that sort of as the little base. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our delicious Bali risotto and we're going to just put a little bit of that nice Bali risotto just like that. And then we're going to come back and what we're going to do is we're going to take this wonderful glaze. You can see it. 
how, what a nice glaze it is. And we're just going to add this wonderful glaze just like that. And um, a little bit of this wonderful spice and our parsnip crisps. Hey, love yous. Join me tomorrow for more of the essence of Emerald. See ya.